Hello, North Central Washington, and welcome to Networked. My name is Jenny Rojanasatian, and today I am so excited to have two special guests from the North Central Education Service District to talk about their work they're doing and technology to help educators, students, and our community at large. Education is something that's really important to us at NCW Tech Alliance, specifically STEM education, STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math, but it's the application of STEM education into project-based learning and career-based experiences that are helping prepare our youth for the future workforce that our community needs. And a huge partner in that work is our North Central Education Service District. Whether you're an educator or a business or a community member, stay tuned. I'll be right back with my two guests. Well, welcome to Networked. I am so excited to be on air today with two special guests from the North Central Education Service District, Pete Phillips and Stefan Troutman. Mm -hmm. Did I say that right? You did. Nailed it. For some reason, I can't nail your name this morning, and <laughs> no I apologize for that. <laughs> the name was Rojanosity, and I should get there somehow better at pronunciation. <laughs> it's, uh, well, welcome to the show, gentlemen. So glad Thank to have you, you here. Pete, I think I'll start with you. You're a past guest here on uh, the show back when we were Guada TV. Yep. Uh, but it's been a few years. Yeah. So uh, let's introduce yourself and a little bit of what you do at the ESD before we talk about the scope of work at the ESD. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So the Educational Service District, there are nine ESDs, we call yeah. them, nine uh, geographically broken up in the state. We serve the four county regions, Chelan, Douglas, Grant, and Okanagan counties. There are 29 school districts, about 4,000 teachers in that uh, region, and we provide services uh, across the board for anything a school district needs. So technology is what we're talking about today, but we also, we do everything. Nurses, business office, special ed, migrant. Um, there is a department at the ESD that's providing support to our school districts uh, from our office here in Wenatchee. So uh, my, my umbrella covers technology covers educational technology, instructional technology, also uh, have my hands into STEM, which is science, technology, engineering, and math, uh, as well as um, other things that happen across the instructional um, spectrum within uh, a classroom. So hardware, IT, the network side of things, I have my hands in all of those as well. Um, it and Stefan, what about for you? What is your role at the ESD? Tell us a little bit about that. Well, my hands are in far fewer things than Pete. Than Pete. <laughs> More specialized. Yeah. 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 So yeah. Pete yeah. mentioned educational technology, and that's yeah. my world. So okay. uh, people hear ed tech typically in the education realm, and they think like I can go fix their Chromebook, but really I tell people to focus on that education side of things. So the best way to sum up my job is I support teachers through in implementing technology to make authentic learning experiences for mm -hmm. students and to really maximize student engagement in the classroom. Technology is such a broad topic, which is part of the reason the Tech Alliance exists. You know, we're here to foster, promote educational resources about technology. Um, you're right. I think when people think technology in schools, they think of the IT help support, which is one important co component of what the ESD does, right? Mm -hmm. Doing yep. some hands-on work to ensure technology's uh, functioning. But let's dive deeper into that support of help for educators, because it's our educators who are really making that impact every day with their, you know, 30 to 100, 100 plus students. Yeah, and like big shout out to all the IT people out there because yeah. it doesn't work without them, right? Mm -hmm. That's the backbone and yeah. that's there. And the tricky part about my job is teachers didn't go through pre-service programs trained on how to use technology in the classroom effectively because mm -hmm. the last thing we want is our kids just sitting rotely in front of computers and just like not doing anything all day. And so it's really riding that line of trying to uh, help teachers blend what they know, what they're really, really good at with just this brave new frontier that we were all thrust into about two years ago. So yeah, it's really just about really maximizing engagement and leveraging appropriate tech tools to be able to do that. Well, it makes sense. I mean, our educators have a lot on their plates. They're, they're an educator, they're kind of part social worker, they're looking at the whole how you know, they do so much to help youth and you're right, they went to, they went to school to be a, an educator and not necessarily be the, the go-to on technology, which is rapidly changing in the classroom. 
Yeah, yeah I, I think that's one of the biggest issues that yeah. we face is that it changes all the time. So not only do we try to keep them up to pace to learn new tools and to, and to uh, new engagement strategies and the great work that Stefan's doing, but it changes every year. And so it doesn't matter how old a teacher is, there's something new to learn. And we always hear in the education community adding one more thing on. Mm. And that's so true, but it's part of the job right. to be able to, to adapt and implement new technology as it comes out. What are some of the things that you've seen um, broadly change the last couple of years? I think uh, to me, what pops to mind is the one-to-one -one device, mm -hmm. right? And for our viewers watching today, they may not know what that means. Pete, can you talk a little bit about one-to-one -one devices? Yeah. And how that's, I mean, five years ago, schools weren't one-to-one. -one. Right. <laughs> right. So most everyone can remember when they were in school, they had a computer lab. Right. And you went to this room that had 30 machines in it. Everything was identical. And the teacher instructed and kids did the, did the work. One-to-one uh, -one is now putting a device in the hands of each student full-time. So a true one-to-one -one definition would be uh, a device, whether that's a Chromebook or a Windows or a Mac or some sort of tablet or even just a phone, they have their own device that they carry around all day to every period in the day. They get to take it home at night. They can do their homework anywhere, any place, and anytime. So it's really opened up uh, the uh, place and the time that learning happens mm -hmm. in our schools. And, and it creates some accessibility because there's a lot of youth who are really fortunate that have technology at home, but we know that there's some major gaps too with families not having access to, to technology tools. Um, and so one-to-one uh, -one is, I think, really essential in kind of breaking down those barriers, giving an equal playing field for kids to get their work done, right? Yeah, yeah. it really does create that common barrier for a lot of students because, yeah. I mean, you said it for a long time, some students had technology at home, and if there were some assignments, they could do further mm -hmm. research, they could dig a little bit deeper. And for some of our, especially more rural communities, they didn't always have that access. So those one-to-one -one programs really level the playing field for all of our students because we can think of technology and access to online information really as a basic human right mm -hmm. or utility because that's the way our world is moving is everybody having access to all of the world's information all the time. Uh, you know, you I know today we're not going to go heavily into Wi-Fi or broadband, but that's been a big conversation of like, access to, to be able to get connected to get online is a basic utility need of families they can't access education telehealth financial resources or you know remote work or school without connectivity yeah you're right that infrastructure as good as we have it in in our county and in all four of our counties it doesn't matter what city you're in whether you're in wenatchee mm -hmm. or you're in Orondo or quincy or up in tanasket there's pockets that have it and there's big pockets that don't have it. And when we get outside of those city limits and up into the canyons, there is no opportunity for broadband internet in, in a lot of those houses. And schools have been really creative in trying to find solutions, right? Setting up schools themselves as Wi-Fi spots. I know our libraries, NCW libraries has been a hub um, for connectivity and um, definitely something, like I said, another episode to go into because it's such a big, it's, it's such a big topic. Um, can you dive a little bit into the EdTech best practices? So how are educators learning how to integrate that tech and in this new world where every student has a device and they're changing the, the, the style in which they teach and do homework, et cetera? Yeah, so I mentioned it a little bit before. The last thing we want is our students sitting in front of a computer just passively engaging in information. Yeah. We hear a lot from concerned parents or community members about this idea of too much screen time. Mm. And one of the main points of my job and one of the main messages I try to get across to teachers and community members is that screen time isn't all created equal. There's a difference mm. between passively and sit sitting and watching a YouTube video versus actively engaging in some learning experiences. And so that really is the foundation of my work is how do we move away from just uh, direct consumption and passive learning to active engagement and higher level thinking. And so there's a lot of tools that we can leverage to do that. Uh, but I also I also like to tell teachers that tech is just the tool, you know, mm -hmm. like I don't uh, pick up a hammer and say, OK, what can I build? I think of what I want to build and then I go and find the right tools. You can think of ed tech that same way, you know, finding the right tool for the right type of learning. Well, and we live in a digital economy. So the reality is our youth are going to go through our school systems into either technical training, right into work, or into a four-year path. But 
in every scenario, technology is being deployed in the workplace. So those are really the skills they need to be set up for success. Um, and that's the ultimate goal behind education, right? We're preparing kids for the, the fu their futures out there. Um, let's chat a little bit further before we have to head to our next commercial break um, about some of the educational opportunities. So the ESD serves 29 school district. That's a wide region. Educators, how do they get involved? Like if an educator's watching right now and they want to attend a class or a program, where do they find out about this information? What are some of the resources? Yeah, great question. Um, our uh, website is probably the number one place that we go to at the NCESD. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's really the bulk of the, the, the service that we provide is training our teachers. We do, uh, uh, ESD employees are out in the districts doing training on site mm -hmm. in the classrooms. Uh, day trainings, evening trainings. We do a lot online, virtual, so uh, educators can attend after they're done in the classroom. They can attend at night, but um, we have a full uh, package uh, for every type of professional development needed, and it's all listed on our website. Super easy to find at ncesd.org. And professional development is something the state, from my understanding, requires our educators to continuously be learning themselves. But the ESD is really kind of cutting edge with the, the professional um, programming you're providing in STEM and technology. It's really exciting to see what you offer to educators. Yeah, yeah our, our STEM team, which Stefan is a part of, is uh, on the cutting edge, like you said. Our computer science team is developing um, training and working with districts to help implement that. We talked about one-to-one -one on the IT side. Mm -hmm. I think the uh, professional development around IT has been pushing and helping our school districts get to that spot of putting the tools, the right tools, in the teacher's hands and then in the kids' hands. Okay. Well, and there's also a way that you're involving business, which I'd like to touch on in the next episode, but we or in the next segment, I should say. But we do have to head to a short commercial break. We'll be right back. We are back in the NCW Life Studio. I've been talking with... Uh, Pete and Stefan from NCSD, really robust discussion. If you missed the first segment, we were talking about professional development for educators, how important that is so that they have the skills to bring uh, new technology tools into the classroom, work with our students. But one of the things uh, that I love about the ESD is how you involve the business community. Pete, can you tell me a little bit about how the ESD has worked with uh, the business community and general community members to, to integrate support in for education? Yeah, sure. Um, the, the ESD, I think the driving goal for us in education is supporting our school districts. When we take that a little bit further, a lot further down yeah. the ro what road, we're trying to prepare our, our youth for the world of work, right? Whether they're going to go to school or two-year school or four-year school or just jump right into industry or into, into a job, uh, that's our goal when they leave 12th grade mm -hmm. is to prepare them for all of those things to be a good worker to be you know all the all the all the things that we want from our from our kids as they grow up the ESD I think has is in a unique opportunity to help bridge that gap and we see uh, a, an important stepping stone for internships and apprenticeships and involving our, our local businesses around the four counties in uh, getting these youth experience and exposure to what the world of work looks like. Most, most kids only know what their dad does or what mm -hmm. their mom does, right? And that's the job that they see or an uncle does. And so we wanna open up those, uh, their eyes to those experiences to be mm -hmm. able to uh, see that there are a ton of different jobs mm -hmm. uh, in agriculture or in medicine or at, at our, our large uh, employers like uh, the PUD that they might not see yeah. if they're just in a classroom. And I think that's especially critical in rural communities because we have such a geographic, mm -hmm. you know, we're just so spread out. Mm -hmm. And you talk about sm small communities that might only have a couple thousand people. You're right, they're only gonna see their neighbors and a, a, a couple different career opportunities. But across the region as a whole, it's so dynamic. Yes. There's so much There's so much opportunity and um, with transportation and all those other things being an issue. Yeah. It, it makes sense our, our youth wouldn't know yeah. um, without the support of organizations like yeah. the ESD to yeah. bring exposure opportunities. Yeah, no, another opportunity that we have is uh, we just created a cyber security summit. And it's really just building this community between education and the business world and our business partners on uh, enhancing and exploring that pipeline 
of a cybersecurity degree for our kids mm -hmm. and the importance of cybersecurity, super big word that we talk about and read all mm -hmm. the time, but it is, it's, it's a very broad area and there's a definite need in our businesses and community for cybersecurity uh, knowledge and skills and degrees. And so we've started this uh, community of cybersecurity folks that are uh, kicked off in February, and then we're meeting monthly to continue the conversation. And one of our goals at the ESD is to create a pipeline where a student can uh, graduate from high school and get a degree or a certification in cybersecurity and then get a job in the Valley uh, providing IT service. I think it's really exciting that you've started this, um, started convening people around cybersecurity because like you said, it affects everything. It affects everything we do, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, even in our personal individual lives. You know, I, I noticed on Facebook last week, I was getting friend requests from people who already have accounts, people who are duplicating and hacking private information. Um, so we all see it all the time or those phishing emails that you yep. get and they're trying to spam your inf information. Um, before we talk about future-proofing classrooms, one more note on the business community. Um, I've loved every year the STEM Summit. Mm -hmm. That's a, an incredible program that the ESD puts together. Um, uh, ping to either of you, can you share a little bit about the STEM Summit? Because that's going to be this summer, once again, with business and educators. Yeah, the STEM Summit, this will be our uh, sixth annual. We do it in August. It's a week-long training. It's a great time for teachers to get that professional development in one week, concentrated effort around everything STEM, which is almost every single thing in, in the classroom <laughs> yeah. that we're teaching. Uh, we have in attendance, we have over 500 teachers come. It's a week long of keynote speakers. Our business community is invited to participate, teach classes. Mm -hmm. Um, and get our teachers ready to kick off the new school year. So we're looking forward to another summer at uh, the convention center, week of training uh, in mid-August. Yeah. So if you're a business, uh, part of the business community watching today, know that the ESD is it's not just about, you know, pulling our educators together. You're just really dynamic in the community. Um, now I'm going to pivot a little bit here. I know we wanted to talk about today future-proofing classrooms and 21st century skills. What does that mean? It's a tricky one, right? Because yeah. how do you future-proof anything? Right. But, <laughs> uh, I, I like all this discussion about businesses and jobs and workforce, and we used to say uh, college ready for our students, mm -hmm. and we've shifted that to college and career ready. And what I like to tell teachers and community members is that the scary reality is that our students are gonna be going through school, and by the time they graduate, they'll be taking jobs that don't actually exist yet, mm. right? That's how fast our world changes. Uh, but the good news is there's some studies that have been put out about what uh, colleges and employers are looking for. And they're not things like content knowledge so much. They're uh, things like critical thinking and collaboration and teamwork and initiative and perseverance. And those things actually haven't changed uh, over the last 30, 35 years. And so we used to call these 21st century skills, but we're 22 years into the 21st century. <laughs> and so we've been doing this stuff for a while. And uh, my job really relies or lies in the world of taking tools that use, uh, that can really, where we can harness these skills and put them into action in the classroom. Things like Flipgrid, which is a video-based platform that gets kids talking with each other and connecting with other students around the world. And it's completely and totally free or using a tool like Screencastify, which a lot of teachers became very familiar with over the last couple of years because it allows you to very easily record your screen, record your webcam, and then deliver information to people and then use that to create authentic products. And so future-proofing your classroom really revolves around those 21st century skills, or I've just started calling them future-ready skills, mm -hmm. so that we can prepare our students to be flexible and adaptable and get out into the world and be creators and not consumers, to have a powerful voice and communicate with communities and know that they can access the, the, the web to connect with anybody across the world at any given time. You know, earlier we talked a little bit about how parents worry about screen time. And this is kind of that flip on it of how do you use technology to actually gain soft skills is what mm -hmm. I'm hearing, how you work with people how you communicate, how you share and create. Um, and I don't think that's highlighted a lot. I, th I think you're, going back to your earlier statements, I think you see a lot of articles of parents being worried on device mm -hmm. or that people get isolated, but it's 
from what I'm hearing, it's very much not that way. The idea is connection. Yeah. And I love that there's all this work on cybersecurity because that uh, giving students these tools, we need to teach them how to use them safely and appropriately. And so absolutely part of that conversation is how do you have a voice, but how do you use it responsibly? How do you um, vet information that's coming to you? How do you how are you a safe global citizen? You know, which is not something that our teachers are used to teaching their students mm -hmm. because it's a very, very new world. What does this look like for um, our English language learners and, and youth that might be coming into the classroom um, learning English as a second language? Oh, I love that question mm -hmm. because that we, we mentioned tech as the great equalizer. Mm -hmm. And so there's so many tools out there that are free that can be used for translation or to meet students where they're at in the learning process. And so there's actually, with the way that my job was created, there's one of me in all of the nine ES, not me specifically, right? That'd be very scary, but yes. uh, technology cloning, we're there, right? right. But uh, there's a yeah. tech coach in every ESD. And so part of that funding, there's grants available. Right. And so there's a lot of money to be had, uh, that things that are just coming out where uh, teachers and school districts can apply for technology and services and training and support that will bring in all these tools that we've talked about, broadband connection, support mm -hmm. for English language learners, support for students on all uh, ends of the learning spectrum. So uh, th there's uh, there's research to be had and there's, there's resources to be had. And so when uh, Pete was talking about earlier that the ESD website is the best way to get a hold of us, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So uh, when you're thinking about like, how do I do more for my students? How do I equip them to be global future ready citizens? The ESD is a really like, you know, good place to support uh, districts as they do that. And as you mentioned, the ESD is really collaborative with other ESDs to bring best practices and learnings into the community, um, including, I see here a note about the EdTech Regional Educator Network. So it's it's not just the resources you have, but you're you're helping connect out broadly. Yeah, and that has been the coolest part about this job mm -hmm. is connecting with other people around the state. Is uh, th there was some of this work that was happening before I came on board, and this has been a continuation of that work. And so there's been some really great work that's been done, just bringing not just people from the districts in our ESD, but from across the entire state, and, and people being able to learn from each other. Well, thank you for what both of you are doing to help impact education. Um, I, I know it's kind of corny, but it's true. Like the youth are our future, mm -hmm. right? And you're both making a huge impact uh, inside of education to, su to support those pathways. Before we have to wrap up, any projects you're working on? Anything we didn't catch today? So many things, I'm sure. <laughs> so so uh, I, some of my favorite, the stuff that I do on a day-to-day -day basis just was supporting individual districts. I love mm -hmm. getting out on campus. I'm working on a couple of different professional developments for teachers and uh, really just trying to mirror the ways that we are teaching in our classrooms with the way that we're training teachers. And that's just been a lot of fun for me. And I'm looking forward to growing that work. Awesome. Yeah, I see a note here, uh, March 15th, you've got uh, educational technology connections to educator mental health and well-being, a self-care mm -hmm. series. And in May, uh, 1999. NCW Tech Alliance has served as our regional hub for technology innovation. As a 501c3, their nonprofit mission is to connect people and technology resources to create a thriving community. You can network with the team and guests from today's show by visiting them at www.ncwtech.org.